student in the University of Massachusetts Law, uh, working with Dr. Danjia Chen here. Uh, yeah, and welcome everyone joining us on this uh, ACC webinar today. Uh, the talk I'm going to give, the title will be Covering Behaviors Characteristics of Adaptive Cruise Control Vehicles Based on Empirical Experiments. And this study is done uh, in collaboration with my advisor, as well as uh, Mr. Hao Zhou and Dr. Hao Helawa from Georgia Tech and Dr. Yuan Changxie in our university. Yeah. Okay, so a little bit background. Uh, one moment. I think I cannot. Also, how are you? Do you need to start recording? Or is it already? I think I already started. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so a little bit background. Um, so recently, the autonomous vehicles technology has been emerging, and we all know that they will potentially have profound impacts on the roadway traffic. Uh, the academia, uh, the academia people, our us has been doing the uh, preliminary no pilot research on the impacts of AV for some while. For example, we are using mathematical modeling or simulation to discuss the potential impacts of them. Uh, however, indeed, we don't exactly know whether uh, this results or conclusion will hold simply because we do not have enough uh, empirical evidence about their actual behaviors yet of the AV. Uh, just uh, corresponding to how just, what, what Hao just said, we know that recently the industry has been uh, working on the L4 level autonomous vehicle, and they actually have released some data set. For example, the Waymo or Lyft, they have been uh, publishing some uh, pre uh, planning or prediction data set of the AV, and it's very interesting data set, and we we should be uh, uh, looking at that and see what we can get from those uh, open data set. But uh, basically, for the current a uh, full-scale autonomous vehicle, basically the L4 level. Uh, as far as I know, they are all operating in a certain region, in the uh, country areas. For example, in Arizona, in San Francisco downtown area. So they they in the near future, it can be expected that this full-scale AV will not be uh, a common scene, a components in the regular traffic yet. Uh, I think in the at least in the recent two or three years. On the other hand, the topic we are, we are discussing today, the ACC vehicles, adaptive cruise control vehicles, has been a very mature technology and been applied in a, a lot of commercial vehicles, uh, especially in the recent years. Uh, at the beginning, they may be only available in those high-end vehicles. I think in the uh, recent two years, even those entry-level vehicles, they, ha they can be equipped with uh, ACC vehicles. So you can be uh, say that this ACC function, and I believe people will use that when, we'll, when they buy the cars with this ACC function. So it can be safely say that ACC controller will be a pretty common traffic participants in our daily traffic. So that's why uh, one, one of the reasons why we are going to, to investigate it, since they are going to become around us, become our neighbors in the traffic. On the other hand, this ACC technology is also serve as a precursor for the full-scale AV technologies. Uh, basically, ACC is, uh, is, is like the longitudinal components for the full-scale AV. So from two, two aspects, we need to investigate. We need to do the investigation for ACC uh, for our benefits. First, it's becoming more and more popular. So we need to get to know that to understand its impact on the traffic. Second, they also give us a hint on what, what will be the future what will the future AV be in, uh, when they are really ready to go in public traffic? So for this uh, particular, particular research piece, we want to characterize the car following features, basically the longitudinal features of commercial ACC vehicles uh, based on real-world control experiments. Here I bolded the control experiments because when we plan or we, when we initialize this research, our, in, our intuition was that uh, since we, are, we can get the vehicles by ourselves. It's better to uh, design the experiment as explicit, as comparable as po possible, so we can do a uh, meaningful statistic based on that. So that would be, that was our int intuition. So that would be very related, relevant to our, to our uh, control, our experiment design introduced later. Okay, for the uh, experiment des design, 
we actually use a three recall platoon setting as as the diagram show here. So we have a little lit, uh, human driven recall at the beginning and then two identical ACC following that. The reason we are using this setup is that uh, with such a setup, we, are, we can in investigate two things. The first is the single ACC dynamics. So basically we have the uh, lit HDV SQ whatever uh, profile, speed profiles we design, then we uh, collect how the ACC recalls, uh, reacts to that. Then we can understand the ACC's behaviors from this pair setting. And then using the third ACC tool, we can first uh, uh, inference the platoon dynamics uh, more, uh, which give us more insights about their behaviors. So for the data collection, uh, we use a high accuracy, GP, uh, high accuracy GPS device uh, installed on board on every vehicles here. And they actually have pretty good accuracy based on our own test. Uh, the mean location of velocity error is only 0.89 and 0.10 meter per second based on our own test. So that was the uh, vehicle setup and the um, data collection equipment. For the uh, our experiment, the more important thing is actually the speed profile design. Here we uh, use a, a driving cycle um, concept to do the experiment design. Basically, we are uh, asking the lead HDV driver to produce repeated driving cycles consisting of a deceleration and oscillation process. Uh, the purpose of this setup is to mimic the regular scene oscillations. So basically, the stop and we can call it stop and go if it's very severe or if it's a, if if it's just a regular oscillations. That's very uh, commonly seen in um, congested and near saturated traffic. So this is a type of very how to say um, typical uh, typical traffic phenomenon in our in our daily traffic. So we are our purpose was trying to mimic that kind of that kind of that type of phenomenon. So here you can see that in uh, deceleration and acceleration process, there can be several variables that can be varied. For example, the dissolved speed. Uh, that means uh, when was the oscillation uh, starts at the when was the equilibrium speed when the oscillation start, as well as the oscillation amplitude means how strong the oscillation uh, or how much the speed has been decreased during the oscillation and the deceleration oscillation magnitude, which means uh, how strong the oscillation been, like that's a harsh, harsh break or it's just, it's only a soft break. So these are the variables we can do, uh, we can vary and test it in the experiment. So corresponding to these components, we actually uh, located five in potential influencing factors for the, uh, for the design of these oscillations and they are in three categories. The first one is ACC headway, so basically uh, in the commercial ACC setting, you can set it to a small headway or large headway, and this can be one potential influence effect, influential, sorry, influential factors. Uh, the second thing is the traffic speed level. For example, uh, they can be on the highway or on the ro local road. They, they can either run on 65 miles per hour or 35 miles per hour, and this will uh, produce difference in their behaviors. The third thing is the stimulus from the leaders. Here we vary by three things. The first is the oscillation amplitude, as we just said, it can be a large, os large oscillation or smaller one. Uh, second thing is the deceleration and oscillation maneuvers, so basically the stronger or softer break. Uh, the third thing we are uh, varying is the low speed cruise pattern. Uh, that corresponding to this uh, in this diagram, it is the low speed part that how long the leader will proceed for this low speed part. Uh, basically, it's corresponding to different types of uh, oscillations, and we differ it by deep and long cruise, means whether the leader will accelerate, accelerate immediately after the, after the deceleration. So we, we set it as another uh, variables, and we, we will be discussing them separately. Uh, so basically, these five, uh, five factors uh, we, we basically do a crossing analysis using these five factors. So we have two times three times two times two times two, and we do two repetitions for each combination, uh, resulting in a total of 96 driving cycles 
uh, corresponding to the testy ACC vehicle. Uh, we conducted the experiments on public highway for the medium high speed that's above the above 25 miles power, and then we did a low speed on the rural road uh, that's for 35 35 miles power. Uh, for the uh, experiment segment, we sure then they slope uh, even the max slope slope is three percent. Uh, I know that's not ideal. We try to eliminate the impacts of slope in this process, but uh, to be honest, the Massachusetts neighborhood has been pretty hilly, and it's very difficult to find a, a feasible non-slope uh, experiment site. So we made some uh, tolerance uh, uh, regarding the allowance slopes here, and we also guarantee that the uh, experiment site has a mild curvature. Uh, the res results we presented here are based on a mid-size electrical car model that is commonly available on market. For the for some purpose of the uh, privacy, some uh, purpose, we are, we, are, we are keeping the net, the car model anonymous here. Uh, for the experiment design, we found that the lead, so we have a human driver who's the who's in responsible for executing all our experiment design. So it's good that we found that the lead human driver actually well executed the desired speed profiles, except for the deceleration and acceleration maneuvers. There's some knowledge, uh, there's some new things we learned about it uh, from the experiment. So basically, ideally, we have these five influential influential factors, and we hope then they're all independent. However, based on our experiment, we found that human actually cannot execute the Acceleration and deceleration maneuvers precisely based on our uh, based on our uh, design, and it actually caused some problem on the data analysis later, which we will talking about uh, soon. But uh, basically, our our finding was that the deceleration and acceleration acceleration rates will be dependent with the oscillation amplitude on our experiment results, even though we have give the instruction telling the leak driver to try to keep them independent, but it's, it finds it's invisible for human to do that. Okay, so that was the experiment design. We have the, we have the uh, uh, vehicle pattern setup, we have the uh, data collection device, we have the speed profile and the experiment site. So we, are go, we went out to run the vehicles, letting the following ACC, uh, letting the ACC following the lead driver to we act to rows desired speed profile, and then we collect the data. After we collect the data, we first uh, apply a pre-processed procedure to the uh, row data by applying a denoise, pro denoise method to ensure that uh, rows collected data has a reasonable vehicle uh, kinematic. Uh, the reason was that actually we found that in rows GPS collected data, there could be sometimes a little bit uh, peak noise that looks very unreasonable. So we are using a, a denoise procedure to 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 exclude to uh, mod, uh to revise those uh, noisy points. But we are using a very loose uh, thresholds to make sure that we don't mess up with the real information in the data. Uh, after we do this we we ha actually have this this is one example of the data we collected for the for the HDV leader and the ACC follower. Uh, so basically this is one oscillation, uh, pretty similar to our, oh, sorry, pretty similar to our, um, what's that? The, the speak profile design, we, the diagram we just saw, the sketch we just saw. You can see that the human actually executed very well and the ACC responds it actually also similar in, similarly in the oscillations. So we, from one oscillation, we recognize five critical maneuver points for the later data analysis. The five points we, uh, we recognize are the one related to the deceleration, the deceleration start, deceleration end, and the acceleration start, acceleration end, as well as the minimum point. That's the five points. For the recognition, uh, these two points, the deceleration start and acceleration end, we use the wavelength transform method, and for the a lowest repass we use a threshold based method to do that. Yeah. So our later analysis will be based on the recognition results of these five points. Okay. So 
once we got those five points, we actually can quantify uh, can quantify the uh, ACC coupling behaviors by doing some combination of those, uh, doing some calculation based on the recognition points. Uh, here we quantify the ACC coupling behaviors from uh, using variables from three main aspects. The first is the response time. So basically, that that's the difference between the leader and follower. Uh, the leader and follower. What's that? The different time difference between the leader and follower distribution start time steps. So that's the difference of these two. And then we also investigate the distribution and acceleration process. We mainly capture it by the dif difference of, or we call it change of a uh, change of average distribution rate and acceleration rate. So basically, that means. Uh, for this distribution process, uh, the ACC might use different, might use a uh, stronger or milder acceleration rate or distribution rate than the leader. We want to capture this feature. And the third thing is related to third categories is related to the speed evolution. Uh, we capture it by the oscillation growth, which means whether the ACC is amplifying or dampening the oscillation, and the overshooting, which means uh, whether the ACC use a uh, Higher speed that uh, as exceeding the um, uh, equilibrium speed at the end of the oscillation. Yeah, so that's the three um, aspects of variables we are capturing. We are used to capturing the uh, ACC coupling behaviors. So we'll be talking then a lot more later. Here uh, we are then we handing to the observations. So. We are, as we said at the beginning, we actually uh, separate, we actually design the experiments with two types of uh, oscillation. One is the deep, deep cases, the other is the long cruise cases, means the leader will proceed for at a low speed for a while. So we separate, we separately investigate them. Uh, know that here sample size is actually not 96, uh, the total sample size is not 96 because we want to guarantee. Uh, at the beginning of oscillation, both of the vehicles are stable. So we actually found that in some some of our experiment cases, they are not starting in the equilibrium status. So it means the uh, the behaviors, the later behaviors, are not quite comparable since they don't have the same initial status. So we want to try to control it as much as possible. So we drop use a threshold to drop those unstable cases. So resulting in uh, 46 deep cases and 47 long cruise cases. Uh, for the analysis, we actually do it this way. First, we have the independent variables, which are actually our experiment design. So we have headway, different headway, different speed, and different leader, st uh, leader stimulus. Uh, ideally, these two oscillation amplitude and leader solution dissolution should be independent and seen as two uh, separate IVs. However, as we just said, we found that the human drivers cannot well execute it, well execute it independently, and it turns out that correlated. So we actually combine them as one, uh, or we actually only use one when we do the regression or in the uh, analysis. So this is actually the leader stimulus category. At IVs, meaning the traffic environment or the AC setting or the uh, basically the external factors. And then we have these dependent variables. They capture the uh, behaviors of the autom of the ACC. So we have the response time, this uh, response response time here, distribution rate change, oscillation growth, uh, oscillation rate change, and overshooting. Uh, you can know that I actually put them in the order of occurrence because uh, uh, it turns out they are actually related. For example, how to say? So basically, for the first response, first uh, variable response time, it's only it is only impacted by the independent variables. However, for any following ACC behaviors, for example, the rate change or the oscillation growth, it it's not only the impacts from the independent variables, but also the but also impacted by the uh, dependent variables occurred earlier, for example, the response time can impact the oscillation growth, even though that's also ACC's own behaviors. So we do this analysis in a, in a, 
uh, order in the order of occurrence, particularly for the earlier DV, we only consider the impacts of IVs. But for the later DVs, we will consider the impacts of IV as well as the uh, impacts from earlier DVs. That's ACC's earlier behavior. And we actually do it, we actually seen roles uh, delta T as a mediation. We'll introduce the concept later. Basically, that means they are transferring the impacts from the IV uh, during the oscillation process. Okay, so we'll do this in order. I introduce the uh, observation on each uh, variables first, and then we'll discuss the mechanisms in the later section. For the response time, that's the how the ACC reacts to the leader at the deceleration. Our first finding is that the response time is much larger than the equilibrium time gap of this ACC. For example, uh, based on our estimation results, the time gap for this uh, specific car models at heavy one, the smaller heavy is only 0.49 and 0.84 second for a, a median heavy rate. And uh, for, but the response time, as we saw in the um, what's that? Uh, the bin plot here, is much larger than the equilibrium time gap. And more importantly, they are actually not stochastic. We do a, a regression, regression uh, using the three IVs as the, uh, as the X and then the, uh, the, the, the what's that? response time as the Y. We found that they all have significant correlation, meaning that uh, headway can positively, headway and speed can positively impact the delta T, which means at larger headway and larger speed, you will have larger delta T for the ACC. And then it's negatively impacted by the leader, dec leader decision rate, meaning that if leader use a larger decision rate, you will actually, the ACC will actually have a smaller delta T. So you'll see that uh, the DV, delta T here, is impacted by the IVs actually. Uh, for the second uh, DVs, the deceleration rate change, we, uh, let me see. So it's getting more complicated because if, as we just said, it's all, not only impacted by the external factors, the IVs, it's also impacted by the earlier uh, DV, the delta T. So the way we, are, we do the analysis here is to use a mediation uh, analysis. Mm, let me see if I can explain that. So the diagram here, I, I show exp example here. So here, the IV is H headway. Um, we, headway will impact the two, two dBs, the response time and the deceleration rate change. On the other hand, the dBs also have internal impacts. Uh, the response time will impact the later deceleration rate change. So what we did was that we uh, build a create, build a a regression uh, relationship between three of them, and then discuss the indirect and direct impacts respectively. So first, in this diagram, we can see that uh, for the indirect impacts, which is these, this path, uh, the headway first impacts response time, and then impacts the deceleration uh, rate change, the headway increase will result in delta T increase. Uh, you can see there's a positive correlation. And then the increase of response time will also give a, will, will in turn increase delta D average. You can see there's also a positive uh, correlation coefficient here. So that's the indirect impact. The increase of headway will increase the response time, then in turn increase the distribution rate change. Uh, but it also have a direct impact, which is uh, this path that headway will directly impact the distribution rate change. It can found that the increase of headway uh, actually has a negative impact on the distribution rate change. That's a different direction. And these two impacts, the indirect and direct impacts, totally, uh, they add together results in the total impacts from headway to the distribution rate change. Uh, in the end, you, if you have a larger headway, then you have this oscillation process. You, what you will see is that larger headway leads to smaller uh, distribution rate change. Uh, that's the overall output, but you can see that internally there can be two things happening, the both the indirect and direct impacts. So overall, we found that 
the three three IBs, the heavy speed and delta D, uh, the leader's distribution rate, all have negative total impacts on uh, on the distribution rate change. You can actually see the impacts of heavy and speed level here. That with a larger speed level, you have a smaller uh, uh, distribution rate change, meaning that the leader is using a milder uh, distribution rate than the leader if if the speed is higher. You can also see that from the headway that if you have a larger headway, uh, the distribution rate that you're using is also milder, meaning that it actually faster break than the leader in larger headway, in larger speed, and in uh, larger leader distribution rate. So the next thing, uh, I will leave the mechanism to the next section. We will look at the observations first together for the three variables. The next thing we are uh, looking is the oscillation growth. This is actually a very important or interesting component because usually in our uh, in a lot of analysis in uh, in the literature, we are using the oscillation growth as an indicator of the controller stability. So basically, you if you are if the controller is amplifying the leader's oscillation, leader's uh, stimulus is unstable. On the other hand, if it's um, dampening the oscillation, it's stable. Uh, interesting thing we found here is that ACC can both we observe both oscillation amplification and dampening in our data, as you can see here. So basically, if you have a larger uh, headway and higher speed, you can see that the far the phi is always negative, meaning that uh, the ACC is dampening the oscillation. On the other hand, if you are in lower speed and the headway is small, it's usually always amplifying. So both dampening and amplifying amplification has been observed in the in our ACC data, and we found that it's both both correlated with the IVs and DVs, of course, based on our regression results. Uh, first, for the IVs, we found that as you can see here, larger headway leads to smaller file, means more dampening. Larger speed also leads to more dampening. And larger leader uh, amplification, uh, leader distribution rate will lead to more amplification, meaning that if the stimulus is strong, then it's more possible that this is amplifying. Uh, that's the impact for IV. But for the DVs, it's also interesting. We found that a larger response time, that's we know that this is based on the regression results, not direct observation, because for the mediator, it's, all, it's already not, the initial study is already not controlled. So these results are based on the regression results. They found that larger delta T, if everything else is controlled, uh, larger response time will lead to smaller oscillation, uh, will lead to more dampening, and larger uh, distribution rate trend will lead to more amplification. Uh, then for the acceleration rate trend, that's pretty similar. Uh, you can see from here that uh, it's actually pretty similar to the deceleration process. If you have a larger headway or larger speed, the leader, uh, the ACC will respond in a softer manner, meaning that it uses a smaller uh, acceleration rate than the leader. And if you have a, here we uh, use a leader acceleration rate as the IB. Uh, if you have a larger a uh, leader acceleration rate, your acceleration rate change will be will also be smaller. For the mediators here, uh, the thing we found that is that even though we have several mediators, be, several DVs across be, before the acceleration process, uh, for example, the response time, the distribution rate change, and the oscillation growth, uh, in the theoretical case, they all together impact the uh, acceleration rate change, the DVs here. But we found that actually, when we have the oscillation growth happening, it's, it's the only significant mediators, meaning that it's actually not quite important what happened before the oscillation growth. As long as you have a larger oscillation growth, it's more possible that to result in a larger uh, oscillation rate change. But the response time and uh, the deceleration rate change, their impact actually terminated at the Oscillation growth and not directly impacts the not not impacts the acceleration rate change anymore, but acceleration the acceleration process is mostly impacted by the oscillation growth mediator. 
uh, we then have the overshooting. Uh, that's the ending part of the oscillation, meaning that whether the uh, ACC is, M is existing the equilibrium speed at the end of its oscillation. Uh, this is also a, a stability, string stability indicator similar to the oscillation growth. Uh, we also observe both of overshooting and undershooting in the uh, ACC, ACC in the ACC car model we tested, uh, which is interesting. Interesting, meaning that they can be sometimes string stable or sometimes not. Uh, for the impacts of IVs, we found that have a now it doesn't have a it has a neglectable total impacts on on site and then uh, on the overshooting. And then for larger speed, it leads to a smaller overshooting uh, consistent with the observation on oscillation growth. And then for the, uh, oh, I think I typed it wrong here. I mean, the leader distribution rate, if we have a larger leader distribution rate, you will also have a larger uh, overshooting. And for the mediators, it's similar to the oscillation process. The uh, oscillation growth is, only, is the only significant mediators here. So that was the uh, observation. I, I, that might be a little bit, a little bit uh, overwhelming because that, that's quite a more detailed observation. We'll have a summary section in the end. But now let's go to the mechanism part. I'll, because we have both observations in the data, we are trying to somehow give some insights or give some conjecture on what would be the potential mechanism of such uh, behaviors happening. So we are also going on the occurrence order. For the response time, our main observation was that delta t is larger than the ACC time gap setting, as we saw just now. Uh, this, may, this may seem expected because if we look at Rose paper, Rose literature, we found that that's common to have a delay turn in Rose control design. So that may also be the case for the, the commercial or industrial ACC controller. On the other hand, we also found that there's there are correlation between delta t, the response time versus the three IVs, the uh, habit setting, the speed level, and the leader stimulus. So we found that it can be explained from the safety risk safety risk perspective. Particularly, we build a, a we we do a theoretical theoretical equation for TTC, assuming that at the beginning the leader and follower has the same speed and then the follower uh, the leader do a distribution and follower react to it in a delta t uh, with a delta t delay so that will give you the ttc ttc number at this time point and we found that it's actually fully aligned with the observation we made that uh, if speed or highway smaller ttc will be smaller meaning that it's less safe. And if the leader uh, distribution rate is larger, TTC will also be smaller. Uh, so that means basically in this switch situation, uh, smaller speed, smaller headway, and larger di leader distribution rate, the uh, ACC is in a more dangerous con uh, condition, and it wants to react quicker if possible. That's uh, in our data, we found that that's a smaller delta T. And then for the second thing, the distribution rate change, our main observation was that uh, the mediator delta T has significant impacts on uh, the distribution rate change, but the IVs, the three IVs ha are having significant inverse impacts, meaning that even though, um, um, the, the, let's, let's look at the description here. So meaning that, so first we, we see that uh, if ACC, the delta t has a positive impacts on delta the delta d uh, the distribution corresponding to the relation between the mediator response time and the uh, of the DV here, the distribution rate change. On the other hand, we also found that the distribution rate change has inverse inverse impact, inverse correlation to, to the IBs there. Uh, and we conjecture that indicates that even though at the 
for example, at a smaller speed of highway, ACC already reacts with a shorter delta T to uh, to to maintain a lot to maintain to 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 ease the safety risk there. But this smaller delta T is not enough to uh, compensate the safety risk it, it's, uh, it's experiencing. So a stronger distribution rate change is still needed to further turn down the risk. So that explains the inverse uh, inverse side of impacts on the uh, delta T and IVs there. Uh, so when we look at the oscillation growth, the third variables, we found that IVs all have direct impacts on, on oscillation growth. On the other hand, the impacts of mediating impacts are or align on the same direction with the impacts of IVs. So here we mainly focus on the expanding the, uh, we, we conjecture that the uh, IVs, basically the headway and speed, they can direct, directly impact the oscillation growth, which is basically the, uh, in our sense, in our uh, setup is basically the um, distribution uh, is the string stability indicator. So it's uh, it has direct impacts on the heavy speed might have direct impacts on the controller state spacing or its parameters. So they can impact the uh, delays uh, in, in impacts the string stability directly. On the other hand, the stimulus might impact the uh, behavior of controller based on the uh, relate, can be related to the delay there. I figure out that I have a uh, almost run out of time, so I try to keep be quick. So basically, that's our founding. Um, the, for the acceleration rate change, uh, that's pretty similar. The main observation was that the impacts of headway and speed are fully mediated through oscillation growth. On the other hand, the lead acceleration rate has significant direct impact. So the correlation between acceleration rate change and mediator, the oscillation growth, actually can be explained on its, because basically, for for deceleration process, uh, uh, the initial status was the equilibrium. However, for the acceleration process, the in initial status, status was the status at the oscillation growth stage. So basically, our finding was that the stage, the condition ACC was in at oscill oscillation growth will dominantly impact its oscillation process. That's the main conclusion. Uh, for overshooting, we found that the impacts of uh, IVs on the overshooting also mostly mediated through, uh, through the oscillation growth. That's also fully expected because, as we just said, once for the deceleration process, the first part of the uh, oscillation is mainly impacted by the initial status, the equilibrium status. On the other hand, for the acceleration process and the overshooting, the stabilization process is mainly impacted by the what happened? What have happened in the oscillation growth section? So basically, for the later part, the oscillation growth actually dominant, dominantly impacts the uh, ACC's behaviors. So we show some exp examples here, the empirical, empirical examples based on our data. Uh, we can do quickly go through them. For example, for if we compare A and B, that's both in uh, have way, uh, both in high speed and similar distribution acceleration strengths, but only difference is a larger headway. So you can clearly see that here, if you you have the this, this leader's oscillation, and in a, a smaller headway, the ACC is react is amplifying the oscillation, but on a larger speed, the ACC is dampening it. It's which is pretty uh, straightforward from the data, and you also see a. Uh, smaller dist smaller distribution and acceleration rate change there uh, when there's a, a larger headway. Similarly, you can see the impacts of uh, impacts of speed speed based on the comparison between case 83 and case 20 here. The only di only difference between them are the speed. So uh, you can also see that in a low speed, even though that's large headway, you will see a uh, amplification on the Oscillation here, but in the, this here is, is a dampening. Uh, we also show that the impacts of acceleration and deceleration maneuvers based on the comparison between A and D, uh, which uh, they, they both have uh, have a one high speed. The only difference is that you can see that 
leader use a stronger dissuasion right here, but the follower at uh, the at figure D, the dissuasion of leader is much more soft. Uh, you see, similarly here you 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 have an amplification uh, in 0.26 uh, meter per second, but here the oscillation is so almost replicated by the ACC, meaning that it's more somehow more stable if, if you have a minor uh, driver's stimulus. So for summary for deep cases, uh, I hope <laughs> you guys are not lost. So basically overall we found that the IVs, the headway, speed and leader stimulus, our experiment design, impacts C, uh, ACC's uh, coupling behaviors during oscillations throughout the process, both directly and indirectly. Uh, particularly we found that the impact mechanism for the ACF behaviors in the deceleration process and oscillation growth are mainly driven by the safety concern. You can saw our TTC uh, der uh, derivation there. On the other hand, for the acceleration and stabilization process, it, it is likely the main driving force is not safety but efficacy. Because uh, as we said, in for the acceleration process, the initial status become the becomes the uh, status at the oscillation growth. And it's actually at the at the time um, because the leader is accelerating, is uh, the safety will no more be the main concern. So now the uh, ACC, ACC controller's main concern or its main driving force is probably to catch up with the leader and increase the speed faster. That respond uh, that responds to our observations on the correlations there. Uh, we'll quickly go through the results on the long cruise cases, but mostly it's pretty similar to the deep case. Particularly for the distribution process, is identical for the deep and long cruise cases. For the oscillation growth, the third variable, uh, we found that there are much fewer dampening in the long cruise cases, which is fully expected because if there's a long cruise, you can it, we require the dampening to be uh, how to say in the process the uh, ACC's speed should be always lower than the leader. Then that's a dampening. But if the leader maintain the low speed for long enough, it's impossible for the ACC to uh, keep at a low speed because you crush it, it, it essentially. So uh, uh, no, dampening means higher speed. It's impossible to keep a higher speed. It means that ACC will crush. So in the end, you will have to uh, synchronize with with the leader, therefore resulting in much less dampening in the long cruise cases. Then it's also related to the acceleration and st stabilization process of the long cruise. We found that first the magnitude of the acceleration retrench and overshooting is getting smaller, meaning that there's less variance on these uh, variables we measure from the data. On the other hand, the impacts from IVs are found much weaker based on the mediation analysis for the long cruise cases. This is expected because, as we said, ACC has been synchronized with leader during the low speed cruise. So the impacts from the earlier behaviors, including the IVs and earlier DVs, diminish. Therefore, one, the uh, correlation, the statistic, statistical correlation it gets weaker. Second, because there's no more, no much more uh, impact factors anymore, so the variance show in the uh, mesh data measurement gets smaller. Yeah. Okay, so that was for the single uh, ACC results. Recall that we also have, we actually have a three week old, uh, three week old platoon setting that we have HDV, ACC. ACC1 and ACC2. So analysis on the single ACC was all, all based on the uh, results from leader in HD, LHDV and ACC1. So for the platoon dynamics, we actually uh, directly we actually do the same measurement, but we capture it by the uh, car flowing behavior trend from ACC1 to ACC2. Uh, basically, we show the five uh, variables we measured on ACC1 and ACC2 in uh, diagonal setting here. Uh, the X axis is the uh, on axis one and the Y axis is the variable on axis two. Basically it shows that ACC mm, how to say that on this figure the meaning can be interpreted in this way. If 
the data point is on the diagonal light. It means ACC1 and ACC2 use exactly the same, do, do exactly the same CF behaviors regarding this variable. If uh, the point is under the diagonal light uh, in the first and third region, it means ACC2, how to say, uh, ACC2 has a regression effect. ACC2 reacts to the leader in a milder setting, a uh, milder manners than ACC1. So meaning that if, for example, if ACC1 is increasing its acceleration rate, the ACC2 is increasing it too, but with a softer, with a milder manner. So you, so that's the meaning of this diagonal figure. So basically we do a regression line here. You can see that if the line is, the slope of line is smaller than the diagonal line, smaller than one, it means the impacts of, the effects of this uh, uh, CF behavior variable is regressing, meaning that you you will still, for example, for the distribution rate change, you will still increase your distribution rate, but the marginal change will be smaller and smaller uh, if assuming such impacts will effects will proceed. On the other hand, the oscillation growth, we found that it's actually very close, close to one or even a little bit larger than that, meaning that the impacts, uh, the behavior propagation on oscillation growth is actually progressive, uh, meaning that it will be, if, if the ACC1 is amplifying the oscillation, for the follower, it will, it will amplify even more uh, if there's a progressive impact. So that's our finding. So basically, we still found delay, delay decrease, the delta T, but it's, there's no uh, significant correlation found. For other variables, uh, oscillation growth has a progressive impact, but the oscillation, the others, they are regressive. So to capture such behaviors, we use a very simple linear uh, model to capture that. So basically, we build this linear regression between linear relationship between the lead, the ACC1's behavior and ACC2's behaviors. And if we assume that such uh, regressive or progressive impacts will proceed for the later platoon, we can build, we can estimate the behaviors of the, let's say the third or fourth ACCs in the uh, platoon. So that that's a, actually a very simple linear, linear model that, that we try to capture the platoon dynamics, but it turns out works quite well. Uh, we estimate the alpha and beta, that's the slope and, the slope and intercept of those uh, uh, linear, uh, what's that, progressive regress regressive impacts on the ACC variables. And we project that to uh, uh, ass assumed, uh, what's that, how, how to, sim simulated long platoon behaviors using our first order approximation. Then we actually compare that to an empirical eight platoon uh, experiment that's done by uh, Gunter et al. 2020. That's from Dr. Dan Walsh's group from Vanderbilt University. Uh, we found that uh, our first order approximation actually produced very similar results versus the uh, actual empirical uh, data that they are collecting. Even though the shape might be a bit different, but you can see that for the most critical manual points that we are concerning, they are pretty consistent, or at least the patterns are pretty consistent. So that's uh, all the analysis. For the conclusion, uh, for this whole research piece, is, uh, research piece, we investigate the CF behaviors of ACC vehicles using few experiments with a three vehicle platoon setting. Uh, for, from the first single ACC dynamics, we found that the ACC behaviors largely depends on the ACC habit setting, speed level, and leader stimulus. That means that both the controller setting and environment will impact the, will impact the uh, behavior of ACC. Uh, and these impacts are actually produced directly or indirectly through the mediation of earlier ACC behaviors. And for the platoon dynamics, we found that uh, we, when we have this behavior measurement, we can capture it in a very simple linear model, even though that's not uh, exactly, uh, that can be, that's an approximation, but it can still uh, represent the 
uh, propagation, um, the, the oscillation or the behavior propagation on the platoon pretty well. Uh, for the ongoing and future work, actually there are a lot, a lot of things we can do. Uh, I believe everyone, uh, a lot of guys in the here, can't hear who's working on ACC uh, data are also very interesting on that because this is a very uh, quite emerging, uh, emerging uh, topic that has been discussed recently. We believe there can be more aspects on the behavior analysis. For example, here we only uh, evaluate the behaviors on the oscillation, but the equilibrium behavior of ACC, as well as other methods to evaluate the non-equilibrium of ACC. For example, we can use a hysteresis to describe that. Things like that, we can do a lot of things about that. On the other hand, uh, we might consider more traffic condition coverage. For example, here, our lowest speed level is 35 miles per hour. I know the LPN is 6 meter per second, which is pretty good, but we still do not have a good sense on a lower speed levels data. Also, we might be interested in the uh, behaviors of ACC in stronger oscillation, including stop and go. Here, our strongest oscillation is only 10 miles per hour. That's because we are doing the experiment on open road and we try to keep it relatively safe, so we are not being very aggressive. But in, in fact, in congested traffic, that might be much stronger oscillation. And we, we should be interested in ACC behavior in roads critical environment. Uh, we also looking forward to better experiment execution. As we said, uh, we found that human driver cannot can execute the speed uh, design well, but cannot execute the acceleration and deceleration uh, well. So maybe we are considering better experiment design or even the auto leader in the sen in the experiment. Uh, we are also looking for more car model coverage and longer platform, which is fully expected based on our results because these are interesting. We, we need to see more data for more car models and also uh, the three car three vehicle platform might not be long enough considering the actual queue in real traffic. If possible, we are looking forward to longer platforms experiment. Uh, yeah, that will be all for my <laughs> presentation today. I think I am a bit out of time. Sorry for that. Yeah, and if if you have any question, I'm very happy to answer. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> Thank you, Kenneth. Thank you for sharing so many findings with us. And for the audience, um, uh, please feel free to unmute yourself to ask questions, or you can leave the question in the chat box. We will read out for you. Hi, do you hear me? Uh, may I ask a question? Yes, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, uh, it's a naive question. I was thinking, do the companies that develop the, these ACC devices, the car companies, don't they have to make this kind of test? And so I was wondering, what is the regulation? What do they have to validate their ACC device? Uh, and do they have to make some data public or everything is private and we cannot know what was their conclusion to compare uh, this kind of independent study with the, the studies that are made by the companies themselves? Actually, for some reason, my I dropped out of the uh, <laughs> the, the Blue Jeans section just now. If you don't mind, could you repeat your question? Sorry, I was I was kicked off by the <laughs> section. I don't know why. Yeah, sorry. Can you repeat the question? I didn't hear that. Ah, oh, oh, sorry. Um, I was wondering if the car companies developing these ACC systems do have to make some tests themselves before uh, being allowed to sell their uh, their cars. Oh. And yeah. is something public? Because we expect that they would do this kind of test just to know if it's safe and so on. Mm -hmm. So do yeah. you know what is the regulation? What do they have to test before? Uh, yeah. Being... Uh, yeah, gotcha. Uh, thank you for this question. Actually, that's very relevant. Uh, based on my understanding, there's an ISO on ACC, uh, actually. So they need to pass through this ISO before they are, they are uh, allowed to use this car this AC controller on their car. 
uh, but on the other hand, this ISO or standard from the uh, vehicle industry is actually a relatively loose threshold. So basically, as long as you are not hitting the leader or you are uh, maintaining in some certain comfortable range of the with your jerk solution racing style rolls, then you are good to go. However, for our traffic people, I think we are investigating this problem from very different perspective. We are interested in its impacts on the traffic, right? Also from the behavior uh, study, because your cars can run on the road safely, but in this range, there could still be many different types of behaviors, and they will induce different impacts on traffic. So I think, yes, this vehicle industry, they will do regulation, they will do uh, standard tests before they are allowed to sell this car. But for us, uh, but they're still pretty, they can still be very flexible for them uh, on their actual behaviors. And we are still interested in this uh, variance here. Yes, the fact that you have been showing that the oscillation can be amplified is not very uh, encouraging. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I don't think strain stability is one requirement in the ISO. They uh -uh. have requirement on, yeah, on not hitting or uh, the comfortable range. But as far as I know, strain stability is not one requirement of that. And I, I believe based on our previous presentation from other folks in this area, most of the ACC, current AC, commercial ACC vehicles are unstable. <laughs> That's my understanding. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, Tena, maybe I can share one more comment here. So yep. when you introduce um, the relationship between response time and uh -huh. other uh, variables such as the time headway. Yep. So I think mm, it recently occurs to me there might exist other uh, explanations. So here we observe from data we use we explain it in a statistic way. way. Yep. Uh, um, but recently I found maybe some of the uh, car volume models under different headways they are hard coded in their program. So I mean. Mm. For different time headways, those control parameters they might be totally different, or, or at least the tuning to be different. So we do expect those changes to happen naturally, right? So it does not yeah. necessarily like if one function you have different headway, then the headway impacts the others. It might they come just from different models and they have different parameters. Yes, I totally agree. Uh, yeah, thank you for the comment also. Yeah, I totally agree. I think here, so the, the logic when we did this research was that we have such data observations. And for the mechanism part, we are trying to give our conjecture on the potential uh, philosophy underlying underlying philosophy. But uh, yes, as you said, there could be many possibility on why the behaviors will vary. but uh, yeah, that the parameter the controller parameter difference can be definitely one reason, and reason here can be one reason. But uh, if it, if it's becoming white box, the problem we are having is that we only have data, so that's a black box analysis. We don't know what's happening underlying. But if mm. there's more white box happening, for example, I know that some open sourcing their algorithm, then we may we can have more understanding and have more analysis on them. Yeah. Yeah, and for the mechanisms, um, as a co-author, I liked what we did. Uh, but today I realized um, previously we picked such time to collision design from the literature, mm -hmm. which is uh, the, the one which is widely used in the literature. And one of the reasons we used it is is because it allows us to put delta t, which is the response time here, so we can analyze mm -hmm. uh, why a smaller delta t might be reasonable if it's getting more dangerous. Yeah. Um, but recently I realized that maybe delta t is not a variable in the ACC design. In their program, they might not have such delta t. 
So I also noticed that in many NPC literatures, they use different types of time duplication functions. I think that could be uh, maybe a future work. Yeah, we can use those trajectories, the speed and the position data, and we try to apply the time duplication functions uh, in other papers, and maybe more similar to what the industry is using. Let's calculate the time duplication based on the real trajectories and see whether we can observe something new from the results. Yeah. It could be one of the um, another yes. future work. I think Ben has Agreed. raised his hand. Uh, not sure whether he's still there. Yeah, I'm. I'm still here. Um, oh, sorry, Ben, <laughs> for keeping you waiting. Yes. Uh, so you know, just sort of in general, I would imagine that every ACC system, you know, possibly you know, make, model, and year even, uh, and possibly even, um, you know, what level the model is. Uh, would have its own dynamics. So presumably the exact model here is not transferable. And you know some models might use time, some some vehicles might use time, some might use uh, distance and so forth. So I, I would imagine the exact model here wouldn't be transferable to all ACC systems, but the broad concepts yes. and method, methodology are. Um, but now, you know, with that uh, disclaimer aside or qualification aside, Early on, I think you mentioned that the experiment used an electric vehicle for the ACC follower, and mm -hmm. yeah, at least roughly, I think it, you know electric vehicles can achieve a uh, stronger acceleration in general. I think so. With that in mind, do you think uh, that might have biased the vehicle dynamics? And the you know, I guess uh, would you expect similar you know assuming these were average results and you switch to a gasoline vehicle mm -hmm. uh, would you think there might be a systematic difference just based on the vehicle propulsion uh that's a very good question thanks ben um yes i agree so as you said uh vehicles can have different controller design and different power chain system the behaviors could be totally different. In fact, uh, here we only present one res uh, a piece of results based on the electric vehicle. We actually did a uh, test, also did a test, did an experiment based on the gasoline and hybrid vehicle. The results we found was that actually the hybrid vehicle, the, uh, against what you saw, uh, Oh, I think Kenan is cutting Least. off. Huh? Yeah. Kenan, yeah, can you repeat think... that? You were disconnected oh, well. uh, a moment ago. Uh, where did you hear until me? I think you were about to say the uh, result from the hybrid. Oh, yeah. The hybrid. Yeah, we actually found that the hybrid actually has the least acceleration capability. And that results in kind of big difference on the with the behavior features here. For example, it is found relatively less uh, uh, string stable and the acceleration rate change will be uh, much more smaller, meaning that the hybrid will use a much smaller acceleration rate than the leader. So yes, I agree. I think if the first, uh, uh, the framework might, can be applied to every potential car models that can be tested. Second, these car models will have quite a big difference on, particularly, I suspect, on the oscillation growth and acceleration and overshooting process. Because for deceleration, that's more, uh, as we said, safety oriented. So they might have relative similar behaviors. But for acceleration, for the efficacy, it can vary a lot. And that's also consistent with what we saw in our data. So, Yes, they will create very different results on traffic flow if they are compo if they are portion very much. Yeah. Yeah. So Ben, I think my my um, thought from that is that so we tested three vehicles, three car models. One is purely electric. That's what uh, the data Tina presented here. Another one is hybrid. And another, the third one is purely combustion based. Um, 
and we are still comparing the results for them. But my suspect is that whatever we see will be a holistic outcome from like the capability uh, to accelerate or related to type. But it's also ready to their controller design. So my guess is that what we see is a holistic outcome of both. Yeah, I, I would imagine, you know, I, I've seen lots of these papers talk of, okay, we will get a platoon of ACC vehicles. And that I think would be an interesting experiment, but just like if we got 10 drivers, each driver is gonna behave differently. If we got 10 ACC vehicles that were all different, they'd behave differently. Hopefully the same make and model of vehicle would behave the same. Uh, so you wind up reducing your variability and hopefully the same vehicle would behave the same in exactly the same situation. But, you know, all of this is stuff to be explored. And, you know, it, it's, it's interesting that we're still in a position where from the traffic flow theory side, we're stuck reverse engineering these um, vehicles that were unlike humans who just drive the way humans drive, these vehicles were programmed to drive some specific way and yet we're still forced to reverse engineer them. Uh, yeah, yes. that's true. That's the status we are in. We are ideally, if that's white box, we, should, we don't need to do this reverse engineering, but yeah, unfortunately that's the status we are in now. <laughs> Yeah, and I feel that uh, actually it's even related to um, uh, the first question that like, the manufacturers. In fact, I think this the result we see is a is a result from a very complicated process. It's not only about the controller design, but also like their low level execution. Uh, so, which is related to the engine, for example, and a delay or sensing or other stuff. So, I mean, even though they provide uh, their controller, for example, then it actually, we cannot produce the complete dynamic just from that controller itself. Mm, that, that's true too, I agree. That's my feeling. Um, yes. So, uh, yeah, 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 then we can add a bit more <clears throat> comments on the first question. Yeah, for example, like we, we were talking about what will be the posture going through before the cars are ready to go. I believe when they, they are doing the tuning, um, basically the the uh, philosophy is that it's mostly uh, what's that expert expert based. So meaning that the tuning engineer, the engineer who's, who's responsible for tuning, will tune it based on feeling. And as long as in some in some setting it passes the standard, it it should be ready to go. So it's still, it's not quite explicit on how they do the des design. Of course, it's related to the uh, cooperation between planning and control. But yeah, in the end, I would say that the output, the outcome, holistic outcome of these ACC vehicles for an industry, they are quite uncertain, basically because the way it is designed. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> I think we are running out of time for a while. So uh, I think we can call it off. So thank you for everyone joining the meeting and thanks for TNM sharing those insights with us. And our next ACT webinar uh, will be on October 1st. Uh, I think that will be given by Dr. Aliriza from UIUC if I got correctly. Yeah, we will post announcements, announcements very soon and you are welcome to check out the videos in our YouTube channel. And that's all. Thank you for coming. You all have a great weekend. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you guys so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you everyone.